Welcome to Sore Meg's Writer's Cafe, where we share the real writer's life over a cup of friendship, sprinkled with laughter and wisdom. My name is LaShonda Hoffman, and I'm your host. This episode's sponsor is the Social Butterfly Promotion Membership. Did, did your PayPal bling every day with your book sales for 2020, or did you only receive Starbucks, Starbucks royalty checks, enough to buy yourself a cup of coffee? If you answer Starbucks royalties, I'm talking to you today. 2021 can be the year you meet your book sales goals. Join the Social Butterfly Promotion Membership today, and you will learn how to create a promotion plan, find your audience, and learn how to become a social butterfly that soars on these social media streets. Check the show notes for links to the Join the Social Butterfly Promotion Membership. Sitting at the cafe today is... I was going to say your name, and I had it all in my head. I know I'm going to mess it up. Altria Jordan and Bailey West. Say your name for me, please. (laughs) I was going to mess that up. Altreja, but you said it right. It's Altreja. Altreja. I said I found it out in my head and still was going to mess it up. But welcome, <laughs> ladies. I apologize for that. My little tongue is not working today. Um, Altreja, would you please tell us a little bit about who you are? Talk about your book, and if you can, give us an excerpt, please. Yes, yes. So uh, my name is Altreja Jordan. I am a speaker, author, and a life coach. I help women who are stuck in yesterday heal, rebuild, and move towards the life they desire. I'm also the host and founder of the Creative Shines Women's Empowerment Conference. And as of this weekend, on the Saturday, I'll be hosting my very first Valentine's Day workshop for single women. And before I go any further, thank you so much, LaShonda, for uh, reaching out and inviting me to be a part of your show this evening. You're and so welcome. my book, I'm sorry, my book is uh, Self-Help. It's an affirmations book that I wrote. <laughs> I am or two of the most powerful words that we use on a daily basis. I wrote this book because doing Positive affirmations really did make a difference in my life after going through a divorce and rediscovering myself, you know, and rebuilding my confidence. Affirmations played a vital part in that. And so I wrote this book to help others, you know, to create um, confidence and courage in themselves by just speaking daily, I am positive affirmations. So I'm going to read um, a couple of them. The book is a 21, it's 21 Days of Powerful I Am Affirmations to help you learn how to shift your thoughts and your words to create the reality that you want. Um, I believe that what we believe matters and the words that we speak matter. So on page, let's see, one of my favorites, all of them, <laughs> and Page. Let's see, day 10. What did I start with? Yeah, let's see. Day 4, I am forgiven. This one is so important to me and dear to me because forgiveness was major in my healing process. And so it says, I am forgiven. What happiness for those whose guilt has been forgiven? What joys when sins are covered over? What relief for those who have confessed their sins and God has cleared their record? Psalm 32, 1 and 2. I am forgiven. God says that when you accept him and confess your sins, he forgives you. Maybe it was a dead-end job that you gave too much time to. You were loyal and dependable, but they betrayed you. You never received a promotion or pay raise you worked so hard to earn. Maybe you had an abortion and you just can't seem to move past it. I can remember when I couldn't get past my prior mistakes and the poor choices I had made. Even though I was finally able to move on from an unhealthy relationship, I hated myself for allowing these things to happen to me. I was so upset with myself. 
I just couldn't let it go. I had given a man my best, and he betrayed me. I carried so much shame and regret. It became a heavy burden. In time, I realized I had to forgive myself. The moment I decided to forgive myself, that heavy burden I had been carrying lifted off me. The same deliverance is available to you. Choose to forgive yourself. Confess your it to God and ask God for his forgiveness. Declaration, I am forgiven, and I forgive myself. Day 10 is another one that I share with you, the ladies, tonight, and it is I am qualified. It is not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from God. Second Corinthians 3, verse 5. I am qualified. According to Marion Webster's dictionary, qualified means fitted as by training or experience for a given purpose. When God called Moses to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt, the first thing Moses did was make excuses. Moses asked, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Moses did not think he was qualified because he was slow of speech. How often do we let opportunities pass us by because we feel inadequate? For years, I used the same excuse. I used the excuse that I'm not ready and I don't know enough. Then as the years passed, I thought I was too old. That could not have been farther from the truth. God's word makes it clear that we are never too young or too old to do what he calls us to do. So if you have been feeling like you are too old or too young to fulfill the task God has for you, I mean, God has given you, it is time to stop making excuses. Declare, I am qualified. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. So those are two of the days from my 21 days to a better you. The book is titled Created to Shine, 21 Days to a Better You. Those are some great affirmations. Why do you think affirmations are becoming popular again? You know, because I think we, I feel like we on a um, self-discovery and personal development is huge right now. You know, everyone is working on self. Mm-hmm. And then that self-discovery that was making those um, I am affirmations, talking to yourself, you know, being kind to yourself, <laughs> getting to know yourself. And I just think it's a move where, like, people beginning to start, uh, you know, just working on their personal development. I agree. I agree. Miss Bailey, you ready? I am. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Uh, So hello, everyone. My name is Bailey West. I am um, the author of uh, Conversations Starting uh, Unapologetically Black Contemporary Romance. I currently have nine uh, books in my catalog, and I am releasing my 10th project tomorrow. Um, I've been writing since 2016, and uh, I'm excited to be here. So I want to give you a little excerpt from my book that I'll be releasing tomorrow. It's a Valentine's short, um, and it takes, uh, it takes place uh, on Valentine's Day with a couple who uh, the husband, uh, the boyfriend actually decides to take to send his fiance on a, a Valentine quest. Um, Ms. Hampton, the Mater D said, yes, I responded, this is for you. He said, passing me a heart-shaped box filled with red roses and a red envelope. I looked at my girls across the table. They both shrugged. What is it? Yes, asked. I have no idea, I answered, looking around the restaurant. Is your restaurant? You don't know what it is? Yes, shrugged. 
I'm just one of the chefs here. I have no clue. Sliding my freshly polished stiletto nail under the flap of the envelope, I opened it and pulled out the contents. I told you I wouldn't be home for Valentine's Day, but did you really think I would miss this day with you? Follow the instructions. If you do them correctly, you will find me at the end. Go to the place where I last kissed you tonight. Your Valentine quest has officially begun. Happy hunting, Cole. So I'll be releasing that tomorrow. I'm excited about it. Uh, it's also um, in uh, – it's a collaboration with two other authors, uh, Tay Russ and Danielle Allen. And uh, so that's just my excerpt. Thank you for having me. Thank you. That was nice. That was nice. I've heard great things about you, Bailey, so I'm looking forward to reading some of your books. Um, okay, my thing is talking to me. <laughs> my first question to you all is, how do you stay focused uh, with your writing during COVID? Uh, so this is Bailey. I can answer that first. I had a very difficult time uh, when um, the quarantine first began. I um, <clears throat> I worked from home because I still have a nine to five. I, I work from home um, a couple of days a week, but I was out of out in the office mostly. And so when we shut down and we were home, I found that my my work time, my work space encroached upon my creative space, and I found it difficult to concentrate and to try to figure out um, how to write, you know, because I was I was working. And so I finally ha- <clears throat> had to start setting an, an intention for the day. So when I would wake up, I would say, okay, today, before I even got out to bed good today, um, I'm going to put some words on this paper, whether it's 30 minutes or whether it's 500 words, but I'm going to put words on the paper today. And as I started setting that intention every day, then I started to be able to get something done. But prior to that, I just went, I mean, when the quarantine first hit, I was just straight in my bed eating flaming Hot Cheetos and watching TV. Like, I had no motivation to do anything. <laughs> but setting the intention for the day really did help me out. I love that. I love that setting the intention for the day. I have, I'm on a, an app called Clubhouse, and it's like three or four rooms that say that about setting the intention for the day. So I might have to adopt that because I was you when, when it, I worked, I worked from home too. And I, I, 2020 was lost on me as it came as a creative writer. I could not find my, my muse did not want to visit me. And, um, but I did not set the intention. So <laughs> that probably was why. <laughs> <laughs> it really yeah, was. it helped me a lot, and somebody taught taught me that too. But it really did help me to just look forward to doing something in the day, and just making sure that I was true to myself, and you know, getting something done every day, and just setting that day because you know our words have power, um, and, and so speaking those things out of my mouth that today I will write just kind of made everything else in the atmosphere move to what I said that I was going to do that day. So that's how it helps me. That's good. That's good. I hope that helps other people out there because I think we kind of lost ourselves in 2020. It, that definitely was a lost time frame. I treat you. How were you? What? How did you stay focused? Yes, I can can so relate to Bailey and you. Um, I the fatigue was real. I just <laughs> lost motivation. My husband and I sit around and watch Netflix and all movies on shows. And what helped me to get back on track was I have these sisters, my accountability sisters, and we all was dealing with the same. And so we decided to start meeting once a month via Zoom. And, you know, we just started setting goals and holding each other accountable. And so I just recently picked back up on my writing and hope and plan to have it finish this book by the end of March, be released by the end of March. But for a while, no, I was not writing. I, I was just, yeah, distracted. I mean, you would have thought I would have been more, you know, I thought during this time, so now I'm going to be more focused. It was the opposite. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Um, you you touched on one of the questions I had for you all. Is, did you have accountability partners? Do you have accountability partners, Bailey? 
I do. I and my accountability partners get on my nerves because they <laughs> actually do hold me accountable. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even want to tell them that I'm doing something because they will check on me and they will encourage me and they will push me. Um, but I, I agree, it's so important to have people who know, you know, how to encourage you and how to push you, but then also how to um, encourage you to pause and take care of yourself, you know, and uh, make sure that you are, you know, providing yourself with those mental breaks that you need. Because, you know, sometimes as creatives, we can get really bogged down with what we're doing and we'll forget about us, you know. Mm -hmm. And, And so even having those accountability partners that say, hey, you know, did you did you schedule your facial or did you get a massage or did you go for a walk or did you take a brain break, you know, just to make sure that we are staying balanced in everything that we do. So, yeah, accountability partners are very important. That's wonderful that they that you guys do that. I have to put that on my list of being as a accountability partner. I have a writer's group, and, we, and every Monday we put on our goals of what we're going to do. And they be on me, so I understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yep, I understand that. But I, I, I have to uh, be more uh, perspective and um, look out for them too, because uh, a lot of people don't take care of themselves. And before you nope. know it, they're in the hospital, and you're like, oh my god, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they're taking yeah. care of everybody else. I had I had two friends who were in the hospital this year and I didn't know they were in the hospital after they came out and I felt bad about it because I was like, I knew I hadn't heard from them but I did I hadn't checked up on them. And so one mm-hmm. of the things I'm learning is to be a better checkup on people. <laughs> you know, you yeah, yeah, yeah. get caught up in your life and then you you know, before you know it, you know, your friends yeah. are gone and you've been missed it. You know, yeah, yeah. It's so true. Yeah. I had a question for you, and I just lost what I was going to say. Um, what would you, what advice would you give someone who wants to give up, who's ready to call it quits in their writing a career? That's a good question. I think because so many times we have. Um, situations and times in our lives where we want to give up, you know, depending on what costs you to get to that point. But, you know, I I would encourage someone and and tell them that, you know, our feelings are temporary. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't ever feel the same way forever. And I think that when you get to that point where you feel like giving up, it probably means that you should just kind of take a step back and reevaluate. Um, if you know that it's a gift that, that's been placed uh, within you and you know that it gives you life and it gives you energy and it gives you a channel to get those things out of you that are in you, then you know there's no way that you can stop it because then not to have that, you wouldn't have the outlet. So I think just remembering that our, you know, that our, our emotions are, you know, temporary. We're never always angry. We're never always happy. You know, we have our ups and downs. And just remember when you're feeling at that lowest point, it's probably when you're closest to that breakthrough that you're looking for. So just hold on a little while longer because the change, you know, change will come. That's good advice. That's really good advice. (laughs) Yes, um, this is Altrija. And I would say, I know we always say, you know, just pray about it. But I would advise to pray and ask God for his guidance and help. And along with that, don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it because it could be you're stuck. You're just stuck and um, you need some help, you know, and guidance. And I know I have been, I'm getting better at reaching out and asking for help for, from someone who may have, um, from an expert in this area. And so that would be my advice. Pray as God for guidance and help, and don't be afraid to ask others for help when you need it. Don't stay stuck. <laughs> don't quit. Don't give up. <laughs> yeah, true. asking for help is so crucial. I think that sometimes as women, we get, like, I guess we feel like we need to be able to do everything ourselves, but we we afraid yeah. to ask for help, or we're afraid <laughs> to let people know that I'm struggling, you know, and, and yeah. I think that we be prolonged and stuck in something when all we have to do is just ask because, you know, People are more than willing to help you get to where you're trying to go next. 
Yeah. I find with, so- even with myself that we don't ask for help because we think we're supposed to know how to do it. I teach promotion. Yep. A lot of people never ask for promotion help because they think that they, because they're Arthur, they're supposed to know how to do it. And, you know, mm-hmm. and that's like, if just, you had to learn, you know a little bit about um, writing, but you do a lot of learning. You and you taking classes, you reading books, you're studying the craft. It doesn't just mm-hmm. come to yep. you naturally, naturally, you know, in the same way with promotion, you have to, you have to, you can you can read about it, you can learn about it, and then you can take classes on it. That's the help, you know. I know for me, I yeah. thought I was superwoman all the time. I didn't think I needed him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah, me too. I could do all this. Yeah, stuff. yeah. I could create websites. I could do these books. I could do that. You know, and, and then you burn yourself out, and then that's how you give up because you burnt yourself out to the point where you're like, it's never gonna happen for me. Forget it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I've been yeah. there. Believe me. And and yes. you know you just give up on it, but if you, if you had asked for help, I know sometimes stuff I I'm like man if I just asked somebody I probably would have mm-hmm. had this hard time. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Asking for help is it's not making you feel weak. It's a it's about you know pushing yourself further instead of taking yourself down lower. Yes, so right. what, I agree. Mm-hmm. What has surprised you most about being a published author? Um, the thing that has surprised me most, I think, is the the community of other published authors that I've that I've been blessed to be a part of. And you know, you hear a lot about women not being able to get along and women fighting and never agreeing. But I have been blessed to be uh, put into a community of women who are so super supportive, you know, and it's, it's more of a, it's not competition, it's I've gotten there, let me help you get there too situation, you know, it's I'm going to push you forward uh, and you push me forward. And I thought, I think that that's beautiful. You think a lot of times when you're in a, a industry that, you know, everybody within that industry is, or that you are around in that industry will be, your, you know, your competition. But what I found is, um, sisterhood, and so that's what probably has surprised me most. I'm so happy mm-hmm. to hear you say that because yeah. I know this new generation of authors, I've heard so many negative things about the sisterhood because that's a lot of them was like, that's what I was expecting, a sisterhood, and I I have seen nothing like backbiting and you taking my readers in, and, and and I I hate to hear that because I came up in the generation where everybody, we all work together, we all help each other and stuff. And mm-hmm. I just hate when, when people, you know, if people feel alone in this, in this industry when you don't have yes. to. Be. And I think, again, it goes back to help. People expect you to help them, but they don't ask for it. <laughs> exactly. Yes, that's so true. Right. Yes. Right. That's so true. Uh, I can't help you if you don't ask. I don't know you need right. help. <laughs> right, you know, right, you're right. Struggling right. over yep. here and, and, you, and you know, sometimes I see stuff on Facebook and I – to me, that's, I think it's a sign of help. I, I've had a couple of people that have posted, like, nobody's buying my book. I have a good book, and nobody's buying it. And they're ranting, and they're ranting. And so I will send something a DM, and, I say, and I'll say, well, what are you doing? What, uh, what kind of promotion are you doing? You know, and I ask them questions. And I know they're probably like, well, why is she being nosy? <laughs> but yeah. most of the time, they're just promoting on Facebook, and that's all they're doing. Yep. Yeah. And yep. so mm-hmm. I say, well, you know, and if you only got 200 people following you on Facebook, you ain't selling much, <laughs> you know. And so, and so then you, you know, they're like, I got, I got all these people on Facebook, and nobody's buying my book. And I say, well, do you know if face the people who are following you are your they are your audience? Do you know mm. do they like what you write? Mm-hmm. And then they get real, they, you know, I, it be, the DM gets really quiet because they won't resp- respond, and then they'll come back, I don't know, okay. <laughs> and so like, we can work with that, you know, but most of the time I think that a lot of people, like, we, we especially women, we're not asking for help, but we want help. <laughs> yeah. We need yeah. help. We, we need, need help. help. Yeah. We, we ain't saying that, so we get an attitude. <laughs> yep. Well, uh-huh. their thing. Uh-huh. They all out here, everybody going on trips and stuff and doing stuff, but they ain't asking me. <laughs> you know, yes. he's like, well, did you did you contact anybody and see if you can join? 
you know. <laughs> <laughs> We don't exactly. do that. So, you know, and it, 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 it's really how you are, a lot of how people are raised. A lot of people are raised with these strong women and they, they you don't need no help. <laughs> you can do it yourself. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you yeah. Know. yeah. How are you, mm-hmm. how, what about you? Um, how are you? Uh, um, for me, this is Atreja. Um, I guess the biggest surprise, but I mean, I always heard that it opened doors, but it has opened many doors for um, for me, you know, to speak and uh, teach uh, Bible studies, you know. <laughs> I, <laughs> I never saw that coming, never saw that coming. Mm-hmm. Um, so, just opening doors. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I guess yeah. it sets you up as, as an expert. <laughs> mm-hmm. People always said that. I was not expecting that when I published my book. I did not, I tell people all the time, I did not think about the different roads I was going to go through once Mm -hmm. my book published, that I was going to become a promotion coach, that I was going to be doing workshops, that I was going to be teaching other people, that people would invite me to come and teach at their places. You know, I I was not expecting that at all. So I always tell my (laughs) you got to think big when you publish a book because that book is is the door to many doors. <laughs> yes, yeah, it opened up yes. so many different things. You know, I when I push go live and I told people my book was on Amazon, my DM started dinging, ding, ding, ding. I'm like, what in the world? How did you do that? What did you do? How did you get your book published? How did you know you was writing the book? And it's like, okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and, and that's one of the things that you're not you you know. You're surprised by because nobody tells you that part. <laughs> but, right, right. You know, they tell you about, you know, the readers, but they don't tell you about all the other stuff that goes with it. And it's a pleasant surprise, but it, it can be overwhelming sometimes, too. You know, if you're not prepared for it, you're not ready to, you know, somebody calling you, tell you, I need you to help me write this book today. Oh, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Logan took me to right. finish this book. It's not going to happen today. <laughs> Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Um and Bailey was discussing about um the negative side. Have either of you had to deal with the negative side of the writing business? I this is Bailey. I think the the the, the most negative things that I've had to deal with <clears throat> are reviews. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um again, you know I write romances, so um everybody has an opinion, you know, everybody leaves reviews. Um, and I think starting out early on, I was not prepared for how mean uh, people could be when they uh, critique, you know, your work. And uh, I remember getting one review in particular that almost knocked me completely out of the game. And one of the reasons why I think it hurt my feelings so bad is because, you know, reviews are supposed to be anonymous, but uh, if you click around, sometimes you can figure it out. And uh, I got, and this lady was like always in my face and smiling and, and in my group and all sorts of stuff. But I mean, she gave my book a one star and wrote like two paragraphs about how terrible the writing was and people don't talk like that and the storyline. I mean, and it hurt my feelings so bad. Mm. Um, but then as I have grown in, um, in the industry, I have learned to not even really read reviews, you know, because once I put the book out there and I think that it's my best, then that, you know, if you don't like it, that's between you and the book. It ain't got nothing to do with me, you know. And so I just kind of look at it, uh, feel like that from that way. And also sometimes I think that with um, readers, uh, they can sometimes pit author against author and, and mm-hmm. we're not fighting each other but they're like well her book was better than her book and this book was done that differently and you know and sometimes that can cause some friction mm-hmm. but for the most part i think that's really the biggest thing for me is just you know people sometimes can just probably and sometimes unintentionally just really hurt your feelings as a creative because you know you're putting your best out to them and then they can really make you feel like you didn't do anything so yeah, and I and I don't think they take into consideration that you're gonna read the review. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. 
And I and sometimes like you know like the person you, you know I'm gonna see you next week, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so exactly. I don't think to take that in consideration. You know, I, yeah. I did reviews because I did a magazine. I did the reviews, probably about 10 years of reviewing. And um, I've always looked at it as the book. I never looked at it as the author or compared it to somebody else's book because I hate when people do that. I hate when they re- compare a book to something, uh, compare it to the last book. Each yes. book is its own book. And it's gonna be different. And 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 when a, as a writer, you have different emotions that you're going through with each book that you write. You know, even if they're connecting, it's still gonna be a whole different a different story. You know, and yes. I, if you've never written a book, you have not a clue. <laughs> so you know, it, it's easy to tear somebody's stuff up, and after you finish reading it, and then and then and and, and you know, move on to the next book, and you you know, and you destroy somebody. If they're not ready for, you know, if they don't have the, the thick skin to handle it. And the sad part about it is every person that I've worked with, they always want reviews. And most of them say, I don't read them. <laughs> I just want them, but I don't read them. And yes, they don't want yes. them for themselves. They want them so other re- readers can read them. But people who do reviews, I don't think they even pay attention to people reading it. They just, they just you know, if, if the book... Somebody I've read today. Somebody was saying that the lady she gave the gave her a one because she didn't like the character, and she's like, "How does that have to do with the book?" And but yeah. readers get in their feelings, and they they I was reading some. Oh, I know it was. I was reading um some reviews for Cicely Tyson's book, and these people were writing reviews and they hadn't read the book yet. I'm like, oh, no. wow. How are you giving five stars of you? I'm so excited to read this book. I've read like five <laughs> reviews that said that they're so excited to read this book when it come in the mail. And I'm like, well, you don't even be on the page. How <laughs> 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 are you writing a review? So I can imagine exactly. somebody writing a review who read it and they hate to, you know, I was telling one of the artists I read her book at, years ago and I couldn't stand the, the hero. But I wasn't gonna give it a, a a a two because I couldn't stand the hero. When when you can't stand somebody, that means that person and put their foot in the in it as I as my mm-hmm. mommy used to say, you didn't put your foot in it. You didn't wrote yeah, a exactly. character that yeah. somebody hates. Yeah. That that means that writer was writing their butts off and you it it, it touched you emotionally. And I think yep. sometimes that's what readers do. They get into their feelings, not into the book. Not into the, the whole book. They just, I hate him, and it's a, it's a two. But that got nothing to do with the whole book. You got a grade on nope. the whole book. <laughs> Not your feelings, but you know we don't give we don't give classes on how to write reviews. So you just have to, you know, you have to put on your skin and say, okay. As I tell my clients all the time, don't worry about it. They bought the book. You hopefully they'll come back and buy another one. <laughs> Yes, uh, yes, exactly. And that's how you have to look at it, because if not, you'll you be all up in your feelings. You won't be writing nothing. You'll be like, I say, take your pity party for one day, and then go on about your business, because that's just one person. If we worry about one person, we look, I have had many people come and shred me to death, and then I'll be like, oh, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. like yes, well, like oh, my. <laughs> you have to move on. Yes, yes. Well, for me, um, this is our treat. I, it's the opposite. I want reviews, and I don't get I'm No one, like, I mean, I maybe two or three or something, you know, mm-hmm. they'll tell me, oh, I enjoyed the book. Well, I'm like, can you leave a review? You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I do want to know what they think. You know, I want to see some reviews. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I, I don't get them, and and you're right. You can get in your feelings because you know that little that little me, those little negative thoughts. Like, well, maybe it wasn't that good. It was, you know, this or that. <laughs> yeah. But um, just keep asking I, because you have a book that <clears throat> as it's not like a fiction book. Nonfiction is right. kind of weird sometimes. It's hard to get them to go over there once they finish it. They, especially if it made yeah. a difference in their life, they got to they gotta yeah. think about it a little bit more. So, you know, just, <laughs> just keep putting it out there. Hey, if you enjoy this book, uh, you know, write a review for me. That'll help me. That'll help, you know, help more people know about the book. And that's, that's right. why you just have to keep asking because sometimes people um, just forget. 
uh, you know, writing, or they never wrote a review and they don't know what to do. And I tell writers yeah. all the time, too, is to, um, to do some mini classes. Just put on your post, you know, this is how you write a review. Or what I like to do is, is, is share a good review. If somebody wrote one that's really good, doesn't give mm -hmm. out the plot, you know, really a good review, post it. Mm -hmm. So when people see oh, it, they yeah. go, oh, that's, that's how you write a review. No, that's a good review. That's how you do it. <laughs> and, you know, and right. share it. And that helps them see, you know, somebody, I, I know somebody, every time she gets a review, she, she shares her reviews. And I do the same okay. thing. I create a graphic for it, and then I post it on my page. And, you know, and I say thank you to that person that wrote a review because sometimes um, other people need to see that, oh, okay, she, she likes reviews. Okay, let me go. Mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes when you just ask. I, I, one time I said, you know, I want to get up to 25 reviews. Can you guys help me get to 25? Oh, LaShonda, I meant to write a review. Let me go right now. And they did. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> so, you know just, just ask. You'd be surprised. People people are strange like that. They, they want, to, uh, what, you want to be asked. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, they, yeah, they do. Uh-huh. They do yeah. want to be asked. Um, so I have a question for you. What advice would you offer to an author whose book isn't selling, not selling anything? Cricket. What, what was the question again? What advice would you offer an author whose book isn't selling? Oh, who isn't selling. Um... I would I would suggest that they reach out to some some people that can help them. I mean, reach out to you know you or or somebody that can 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 walk them through the steps of what they actually need to do to get the book moving. It could be that the book is bad, <laughs> you know, that they may need to put to you know shoot it through a proofreader or an editor um, or both to make sure that it's the best product that they can put out. You know, starting out, people don't really know about how the importance of, you know, the community that you build around you as far as those other independent contractors like your proofreaders and your interior designers and your editors and your book cover designers and stuff like that because those people who do this every day, know how what makes a good cover so they can make you a, a better cover than maybe if you just went into, you know, KDP and used their little cover generator or cropped some pictures from Google and put it on a, on, a, on a cover, you know, or talking to a proofreader and understanding, you know, these words are misspelled or this sentence can be turned around or your editor, you know, your your line editor, developmental editor. Like there are so many people out there that can help you really put out a, a polished um, product. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if it's not selling, if it's, you know, like we talked about before, never wanting to ask people for help. But sometimes if you see, a lot of times, most times, all times, when you see yourself in that situation, you really do need to reach out to those people who are more seasoned in the industry and get their input so that then you can put out the best product that you can. And sometimes it could be like you said, you you trying to sell it to your family and your friends and mm -hmm. you're not writing for your family or your friends, they're not going to buy it. You have to build an audience. You know, we think because I got 500 of my closest cousins on here, they all going to buy a book. Not necessarily. You <laughs> may not wrote, yeah, that book may not sell to your family. You got to make sure that you build your audience and know the people that you're selling your book to and surround yourself with those people who like your product, you know, so that when you put it out there, they're to consume it. That is so true, so true. Um, building your audience is so, so important. And, um, and asking questions if it isn't selling. Because uh, sometimes... I've noticed that a lot of people aren't looking at pricing, especially as a new artist. You you Ooh, come yeah. out here and have a fourteen dollar ebook if you want to. <laughs> right? Right, yeah. and, but when you get crickets, you will find out, you know. And you 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 have to know where you fit on the scale because you can take it, you know, if you put your price out there and you get nothing, then you need to, you not, you got to look at it again. Is it, it's just the same thing as everybody else charging. Uh, you know, people, oh, I put a lot into my book and I need to get my, recoup my money. Yeah, 
but you got to find the audience that's going to that's gonna pay that. You know, there's some people yeah. that don't have a problem with paying whatever it is it costs to buy a book. They don't have a problem with that. But most average reader, they, they got a limit on what they, how much, you know, maybe it's $6, maybe it's $10. You know, you, stuff that you need to know before you price your stuff. Well, what's the most you ever paid for a book? Oh, you know, $15. But, mm-hmm. you know, it was for somebody that was, that was a celebrity or something like that, you know. You have to put your stuff. I saw somebody the other day, and her book was twenty eight dollars. I was like, "Wow!" Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh-huh. Yes, I'm seeing a lot of that too. <laughs> and so, um, if you get that twenty eight dollars, good, you know. But wow, <laughs> I, I want to know who that audience is so I can get some of it <laughs> because yes. you know you you have you have to. You have to know what everybody is doing, and you. And then some people like I'm, I've seen a lot of coaches that say, "Well, don't be like what everybody else is doing." But pricing wise, sometimes you have to. If if you, you overprice yeah. yourself, you put yourself out of the market, you know. Yep. And and if you underprice yourself, you put yourself under the market. You know, they're like, "Well, that's so cheap, cheap." Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know so you have to do your research and ask questions. Ask questions. I always tell when my book came out. I had it for six ninety nine, and I talked to one of my uh, my mentors, and she was like, um, "You want the truth?" <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I want the yeah. truth." <laughs> and she was like, "I need you to bring that price down a little bit." And she said, "It's an ebook. Am I paying that?" <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and she was right. I put it down, and yeah. boom, people start buying it. I was like, "Okay, uh-huh. yeah. right." Uh-huh. You know, it, it be. Because I was told that it was, was non fiction is different from fiction, and that you know, no, it, it, you got to look at also uh, what what people are buying, what people are spending on. You know, you can go. I, I was on a, um, this lady had a book about the Beatles, and she was charged. It was twenty. It was twenty twenty nine dollars. I was like, woo, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and she sold a couple of books. We were at an event. She sold a couple. She didn't sell a lot because if, for twenty nine dollars, you could have bought four or five other people books. You know, so you have to think about when you were among people. We were doing vending, and I was like, wow. You know, and I was like, oh, I want the book, but I was like, I don't want to pay twenty nine dollars for a book. I ain't paid twenty nine for it, and then one the hardcover. <laughs> so I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hardback. It's a different thing, you know. That's, those are a little bit more expensive, but you know, a paperback book for twenty nine dollars? Nah, I don't think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Atreja? Um, oh, yes, um, pretty much the same as you ladies have mentioned. Uh, being in that audience, social media presence ha- helps a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, like this, you know, podcasting. Um, Groups, I, for myself, I did quite a few, of, like, I knew a book club, you know, if you mm-hmm. can find groups or book clubs, women groups, or depending on your audience, that helps because once you get um, in the group, the word of mouth, you know, people tell and tell and tell others about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but social media was probably the biggest for me, has been the best for me. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so how are you how are you both meeting new readers during COVID? We're stuck in the house. How are you guys meeting new readers? We almost have a captive audience right now with everybody in the house. People are really, really <laughs> we do. Yes, people have really been reading, and I think it's a, a magnificent. I mean, it's a wonderful thing. So. Um, uh, like I talked about earlier, with that support group of, of of authors within the community that promote your work, so they, you know, their readers will see it when you release things, and then um, having opportunities like this to to be on podcasts or in other reader groups to discuss work has been really beneficial. And I have uh, during this quarantine time and during COVID, I have really picked up a lot of new readers because people are looking for things to do, you know, mm-hmm. and, and why not escape in a book, you know, why not find inspiration uh, in a book. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been pretty easy right now. Oh, I'm glad to hear you say that. I So many people fought 
promoting during the COVID time because they were I well I we all were kind of in a trance, but um, yeah. I I know that when we go when we are in hibernation stage we go back to what we used to do we watch TV and we read. <laughs> yeah. So I was like. You missing on these dollars? Try to pretend like it, so you wait till till it it goes. I had a lot of people tell me I wait till it's over and then I go back to promote. And I'm like, do you know that everybody is in how in the house? What they doing? Yeah, they reading. Yeah, <laughs> you yes. know they're reading. They're going to get books. If they're not buying books, they're getting them from the library. Cause even the library had curbside service. They were like, yeah, come on, get these books. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I, I just I was just surprised by so many people that were saying they wasn't promoting. I don't, I'm not promoting LaShonda. And I was like, okay. My clients, I was on them. I was like, let's do this because let's make this money. One of my clients, she does a lot of events, and she uh, she was like, this was her biggest year in selling e-books because usually she didn't sell a lot of e-books. And she was like, mm-hmm. everybody is buying e-books, and then they go and buying the whole series. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> if the book is yep. good, you're going to buy the whole mm-hmm. series. You know, you right. got nothing to do with <laughs> it. She's like, let me read these books. Let me check. I was, I didn't read a whole bunch of books that, you know, because you, you, you got time. You got time to see. Yep, them. exactly. <laughs> right. Shoot. What about you, Atree? Well, I'll be honest. I have not really been promoted. Not but I've been, I haven't really been promoted. But um, listening to Bailey, like your audience, the people, people have been buying still. Okay. And that's that's looking for it's like working. I guess it's like you said, they're looking for some inspiration, you know. Mm-hmm. So they remember I guess from when I was when I did promote. Mhm. They had you they had you in they in their wish list. So they went down yeah. their wish list and clicked the button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's and now is a great time to promote too with you know, at the big top of the year. I mean, we almost gonna hit that peak where people gonna quit all of their New Year's resolutions. However, mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, people are looking for those things to, you know, help set those daily intentions for the day. Like mm-hmm. I, they need that, that the book that you yeah. that you offer, where you have a different scripture or a different um, encouraging thing every day. You know, mm-hmm. that stuff is important. So if you can yeah. promote it, you know, get it out there and promote it and let yeah. people know about it because yeah. people are looking for it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just yeah. bought a a hundred yeah. days of what's the name of this book. Uh, I'm giving a free plug here. 100 Days of Believing Bigger is a devotional journal by Marshawn Evans Daniels. You know why I bought mm-hmm. it? Because somebody else on Facebook, Rhonda McKnight was talking about it, and she's an author. And then four mm-hmm. or five other people came back and said they got it. It was so good. And I was like, you know what? I want to check that out. And I ordered it mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and from somebody's post about it. So you yeah. post your post your uh, affirmations on that girl. You be look people. Yeah. People need uh, that. Like we were just talking, people need that in their lives, and, and yeah. affirmations are big right now. And so you know, if you just post one yep. picture every day, <laughs> well, somebody they're like, oh, gosh, I need that in my life. You know, and that's yeah. the thing about promotion is is you people have to know about it, and that's if they know about it, then they'll 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 get it. Like me, I. Somebody posted about a journal. I don't need no journal. <laughs> I was like, that sounds good. Let me check this out. <laughs> but that's how that's that's the word of mouth. That's the best promotion ever. And then yeah. I was really shocked because the Arthur came on the on the post because I posted I put it down there. I said, you know what? I just I just art I just ordered this book. And she came back and said, thank you. I didn't even know she was reading the post. So see. <laughs> Yeah, yep. that just look. That just made her a little bit more in my in my eyes. I was like, all right, lady. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> As a reader, you're like, wow. The author just said thank you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. You know, so that's that's something else. Something you see somebody say thank you, reading your book, and they got a little post something. Thank them. You never know. You made their day. That yeah. that's true. That's true. Yeah. All right, ladies, look at us. We done got into a good conversation and almost done up out of here. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So please tell us how we can find you and um, where to find you. Um, So I am on uh, all social media. 
um, Bailey West on Facebook, um, Instagram, Author Bailey West. I also have a Facebook group uh, on Facebook, uh, Bailey's Coterie, that's open to my readers. Um, my website is uh, bailey-west.com. And I'm also on Twitter, but I don't really know how to work it, so <laughs> I'm just on that. <laughs> I am not a Twitter person, uh, but you definitely can find me on Facebook and on Instagram at Bailey West or Author Bailey West. All right. So, are you doing any type of activities this online that people can come to? I just, you know what? Before I got on the phone with you, I just did a live uh, in my oh. group. Uh, well, actually, across three groups with me and uh, two other authors, Tay Russell, Danielle Allen. But I'm always going live. I'm always giving things away. I'm always talking about books. Um, so, if you find me out there, you'll find me doing all those things. Okay. Good to know. All right. Well, you, the same. I'm all across social media. Altreja Jordan on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. New to Clubhouse. And um, <laughs> which one is it? The same Twitter. I had to do have an account, but I hardly ever tweet anything. Yeah, I'm going to work it all the way. So, yes, just my name, Altreja Jordan, and I'll come up, and my website is altrejajordan.com. Okay, okay. Well, I'll, t- I'll give you a tip about Twitter. Twitter is instant right then and there, so I just use it to learn about stuff. <laughs> you can go on there and find all the gossip about the world if you want some gossip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You want some literary information? You can get it on Twitter. They know all the stuff. If you want to learn who's buying what and, and and types of books, you get it on Twitter. Twitter is the is the most people that are on there are usually in the literary industry, um, and they they share a lot of information on there. If you went, well, we're not going to conferences right now, but back in the day, they when you went to a conference, if you used a hashtag. You could go to the conference with them. Somebody, somebody's always hashtagging what they're doing at the conference, and so you could do, use hashtags and find out different things about stuff. And you can use the hashtags on Twitter too for that too. If you follow different, like I look at This Is Us. So on Tuesdays they do a hashtag mm-hmm. This Is Us, and then we talk. You know, you can talk to the people on This Is Us. So so many different things you can do on Twitter where you don't have to just be tweeting if you're not into tweeting. I don't do too much tweeting mm-hmm. on there, but I can go, if somebody, if something happened in the world and I can't find it on Facebook, I can go on Twitter and Twitter will tell me what's going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they, mm-hmm. they, they always know what's trending. They always know who got drugged through the mud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, what happened to that person? You go on Twitter, Twitter going to tell you everything that happened. You know, what broke down, what what organization blew up, you know, you'd be like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> They somebody will <laughs> tell you about it. So that's what I mm-hmm. use Twitter for. I, I for t- for keeping up with the information of what's happening in the in the literary world. Mm-hmm. But, um, that's a great thing for that, and you know, and it's always nice to have a platform that you're not too active on because you can, you know, if you if the other ones start acting crazy, then you can go to there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, build it up. But that's what I love about Clubhouse. I got on Clubhouse and was like, hey, nobody, I know anybody over here. It's all new people. So that's what I love about it. Nobody over there I know. I can go over there and be, a, you know, if I want to act bad, I can be bad. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like about Clubhouse. Too. But you know what people like to do on Clubhouse for whatever reason is call you on stage. And I'm oh like, I'm not in here yeah. to be on stage. I just want to listen. <laughs> Daddy, don't look, I went on Clubhouse to be a different person. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said I was not going to be talking about books or literary stuff because I didn't think any of those people were on there. And so I was mm. like, I'm just going to be LaShonda. I'm going to come on here and do what I want to do. And the first room I went into, the lady called me on the stage. This is LaShonda. Come on, LaShonda. Come on up here and talk about this. I'm like, <laughs> I, I I only been on her two days. I don't know what to say. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I was like, okay. And then it taught me, you better be ready because somebody at that time, they will pull you on the stage. And I didn't know that you're supposed to mute yourself. So you went completely live. Hi, hi. Oh, like, yes. oh my God. Yes, yes. <laughs> I didn't know the rules that when you go on stage, you mute yourself. So I went up there, hey, LaShonda, hey. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> my heart pounded in my chest like, oh, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, oh, my God. They didn't brought me on stage. You know, you like, uh, I don't do I got on the right clothes, you know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It was a hot mess, and I was like, okay. So I have learned that if you're in the audience, just be ready because somebody going to call you up there. you be like, oh, yep. <laughs> I don't care. Now, look, they don't even care if you fly. So I say, like, LaShawn, I was like, my son is in the background. He's playing a game, screaming and hollering. They don't care. <laughs> like, so <laughs> come on up here. We get babies and everything. Come on. <laughs> so, so be prepared. That's all I can say. Just be prepared because, you know, you know, the best part about it is that they don't got to see you. They just hear you. <laughs> I know. And that is the best part. Yes, that's yeah. the best part. And I'll be like, oh, my God. I'll be looking like, I don't know what. Mm-mm. <laughs> if this was a camera thing, I, would, I probably wouldn't enjoy it as much. <laughs> <laughs> so, but ladies, I really enjoyed talking to you guys today. Thank you for being here with me. Um, well, that was bad. Um, hopefully our listeners have got some good information from you all um, and found it very helpful. I want to thank our sponsors, the Social Butterfly Promotion Membership. Check the show notes for the link to join. I want to thank you, our listeners, for taking time to listen to the podcast. I have three questions for you. Did you enjoy this episode? If so, subscribe to the platform you're listening to so you don't miss an episode. Number two, what did you think of this episode? Tell us by writing a review on the platform you're listening to. Or send to onesormeg at gmail.com. I love getting reviews. Number three, did you learn something from this episode? If you did, please share the podcast with your community. Would you like to be a guest for an episode? Contact me at onesormeg at gmail.com. I am scheduling for the second quarter. One last question. Have you promoted your book or business today? If you haven't, go showcase those wings. Someone needs what you have to offer. This is LaShonda Hoffman, and I will see you on the next.